Angel fans, we continue with our roster recap as we prepare for the 2024 season. Today, we're looking at first base. Nolan Shonowell, of course, made a huge splash last season. So is he the guy the Angels are going to rely on at first base? Who's backing him up? Who's behind that guy? And most important question, are any of them good? That's what we want to talk about today. All that and more. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and Become a Locked On Everydayer. We love our everydayers. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. You've got that rundown memorized like the back of your hand, my friend. Well <laughs> done. Like I struggled with that one. I think I had to start the show like three or four times <laughs> on sorry. my own yesterday. So, hey, thanks, everybody. Everybody for being here for this episode of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every single day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. I have to carry my weight somehow, right? Hey, my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. That's my rundown that I have memorized is the, <laughs> uh, the you and me part. Uh, yeah. Hey, big thank you to everybody who voted for us in the Sports Podcast Awards for the Best Baseball Podcast. Third place, Mike, we took home the bronze medal. Heck yeah. That's, that's how they awarded it, bronze medal. So, yep. uh, like, like I said yesterday, nothing but bronze metal takes and yep. bronze insight from here on out. So all year long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, we're back to five days a week, by the way. So if you're joining us on a Tuesday, make sure you catch yesterday's episode on Monday and we'll be here Monday through Friday for you gearing up for the 2024 season on today's show. We're doing our roster recap, continuing our conversations about each position on the angels. And we're talking about first base. Let's start Mike with Nolan Shonowell. I'm going to read something to you, Johnny, and I don't want it to just be glossed over because it's it's pretty incredible. Sean yeah. Noel was the 11th pick in the draft last year, and then three months later, on August 18th, he debuted with the Angels 40 days after being drafted, Johnny, and he became the starting first baseman. You said three months later, and I thought of... Three months later, he say he won't date or return her call. <laughs> Sorry. You got that 90s jam in your head. I Always. love that. But, John, that is that is such an incredible accomplishment for him. And yeah. it wasn't like he struggled. It wasn't like he right. came up and just you know tried to figure things out. He played in 29 games, and he reached base in all 29 of those games, which was a franchise record. That's that's what uh, – look, I, I know that he was rushed up. I know – that there are a lot of question marks from Nolan Shonowell. But can we just take, not take for granted, the moment the, and the fact that he came up and performed and yeah. performed well yeah. for having been a college player three months earlier. And here he is in the big leagues. And you can criticize the move, you can criticize if it was too fast and whatnot. But you and I, and Locked On Every Day, or who are Angel fans, have seen our share of guys right. that were really hyped about or whatever right. come up and totally poop the bed. Yeah. And Nolan Shonowell did not do that in 29 games last season. Brandon Wood, Dallas McPherson. Right. I mean, gosh, there, we could go down the list. And right? how long were they in the minors, Michael? Right. They, <laughs> I don't I don't know, but they they certainly didn't last in the majors either, right? It's nice to have somebody besides Mike Trout come up and not just hold a spot, but perform, right? The last guy to do it, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that uh, 29 game streak, Johnny, it's still active. It'll continue in 2024. And the other good news, other piece of good news for Sean Noel is he still has his rookie status. That's yeah. a pretty good thing. So here's his slash line from last year in those 29 games, 275 batting average, 402 on base, which is great. 330 slugging, so that's going to have to improve, right? But we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. And a 732 OPS and a weighted runs created plus of 112. John, a 15.2 walk percentage, a 14.4 K percentage, and then he spread the ball around, John. 33% of his hits he pulled, 34 went to center, 32 went to left. So this guy uses the whole field. He hit a lot of ground balls that did find the outfield. 50, almost 50% of his hits were 
ground balls to the outfield. His plate discipline was outstanding, John. Made contact with 90% of the balls that were in the zone. Only okay. swung at 21 balls out of the zone. We've shared this story on this on this pod before, but Sean O'Well kicks himself out of the batting cage if he swings at a ball or if he takes a strike. I love that discipline. I love that accountability. And maybe that's why he was good last year, John, because there was no discipline or accountability <laughs> on this Angels team, right? Yeah, self-imposed discipline and accountability goes a long way when there's none coming from the coaching staff or what have you. But Mike, let me talk about Nolan Shonowell defensively because he plays an important position over at first base. He had an ultimate zone rating, which again is a fan graph stat that kind of combines all of the things that you want to know, you know, range, arm, things like that. An ultimate zone rating of negative 0.1. So negative 0.1, basically zero, uh, basically right there. Uh, Negative two, Defensive run saved in 244 innings. Sean Well is seen as an average defender at first base. Safe to assume that he could get better yep. under Ron Washington and his uh, defensive prowess. I know that uh, spending time as the infield coach has benefited so many people across the league because they've worked with Ron Washington. He was named, Sean Well was named a top 100 prospect by both Baseball America and MLB Pipeline. Meaning if he wins rookie of the year, the Angels will receive draft pick compensation for him in 2025. Mike, Sean O'Well is the starting first baseman on opening day and moving forward, right? I, I think so, Johnny. I think he has a good shot at winning rookie of the year. I think he's somebody that reminds me a lot of an early John Olerud. John Olerud played for the Mariners. He played for the Blue Jays. He was good defensively. Sean O'Well hasn't shown that. The reason why I'm comparing him is early John Olerud wasn't a power hitter. He was a doubles hitter, but he wasn't a power hitter and he hit for a high average. And so an average season for him would be 300 something. He would have eight home runs and maybe 60, 70 RBIs. And so I could see Sean Owell being someone like that for the Angels this season. In fact, Fangraphs does have a prediction as to what they think the uh, Angels will finish at and what the players will finish at. And they gave Sean Owell a slash line of, 257, 362, and 419, and 15 home runs and 56 RBIs. Do you take that, Johnny? Are you over and under on that batting average? Are you over or under on the home runs? I'm taking over 257 in batting average, and I'm taking under in 15 home runs. If he okay. gets to if he gets to 10, that will be yeah. a successful Sean O'Well season. Yeah. But but here's here's a, an area I think you and I have discussed this before. And I think it's important to bring up again. We have a lot of guys around the diamond who hit for some pop. Obviously, Mike Trout, Mickey Moniak showed up, especially as a left-handed hitter. I'm interested to see what Joe Adele can do. But wasn't our main issue last year, Mike, just getting on base yeah. and pushing runners over, whether it was a base hit or a bunt, or driving runners in when they're in scoring position. I think we have enough pop around the field that you can spare your first baseman having some some pop there. And so for me, if if Nolan Shawnowell's slugging percentage is going to be 419, according to fan graphs, yeah. that tells me he's going to hit a lot of doubles more than right. home runs. Right. Uh, I still think his on-base percentage is going to be spectacular. I see a lot of projections putting him slotting in at like eight or nine. Honestly, Mike, I'd let him lead off. I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't try to fix what's not broken. Same. And I'd let him lead off. I don't know whether you'd want Trout second or possibly third. I would like to see Trout at third personally, but that's just me. Uh, but again, I think Sean Owell has certainly made a case for being a guy who can get on base and be driven in. And so yep. I, I trust Ron Washington with his lineup construction because he's he's done it before. He's been yep. around the block before. <laughs> the last time we had a veteran manager uh, make a lineup, it was Joe Madden in 2022, and Matt Duffy was batting cleanup uh, yeah. on opening day. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was thinking there. So, <laughs> hopefully, got to get better. Ron Washington will be able to figure out how Sean Wealth best fits into this lineup. Now, maybe he's nine, and so he's that prototypical second leadoff guy, sure. you know, and and that sort of thing always seems to work out. But again, we, we've got some pop in this lineup, and I don't see a problem with having a guy like Sean Owell, who plays a position where normally guys are going to hit, you know, 20, 
25, 30 home runs. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But look, that, the, the pop is not our problem. The, right. the home run right. is not the Angels' problem, right? Right. Well, two thoughts on that. One, you put Sean O'Well ahead of Trout, and the narrative has always been that Trout will hit 40 home runs and knock in 50 RBIs, right? Because nobody's on base for him. So, right. Well, that's so the have, facts. Yeah. Exactly. We, so, so to have somebody on base for him is great. Two, there's there's this kind of funny narrative, and if you're new to baseball, you may not be aware of it. But if you're an everyday, or you probably are aware of it, aware of it, where a home run can sometimes be a rally killer, meaning mm. that you're you're coming back right, and then somebody hits a two run home run, but you're down by four runs. Then you got to get another runner on base, and then another runner on base, mm. right? You're gonna have to do all of that. Sean Owell is the type of guy that can keep a rally going because he's not necessarily gonna hit it over the wall; he's gonna hit the wall. And yeah. he's going to end up at second base. And then you have runners on, say, in front of him that are going to run for days. And that's the type of hitter that I think he can be. I and that just saying. brings energy. It brings excitement. Plus, Bo Porter said, we want to be a team that is not predictable, especially on the base path. And so I think for somebody like Sean Owell, hitting in that number one spot, that's a key spot for this lineup. If they want to get a little bit funky, a little bit creative, I think having him bat behind Mike Trout might actually be something to consider based upon the fact that he gets on base hmm. and he makes contact. And you have Trout, who's a great base runner, on first base, on second base, and then he's coming around to score because Sean Owell is going to make contact, whether he's moving him over or he's making contact that actually knocks him in. You're a big fan of uh, contact guys. Hitting, I love contact hitting, guys. hitting third or fourth in the lineup. I heck yeah. Uh, that, I, I, know. Know. I know. I know. I know that, that you know, sometimes <laughs> the numbers don't lean in the my direction, but I think when you have a great diversity in your lineup where sure. you have somebody that can keep the rally going, that was what we, I mean, we talk about the O2 angels all the time. They were able to keep the rally going yeah. and Garrett Anderson played that role. He didn't have a ton of home runs that season it was a good home run hitter, but what didn't have a ton of home runs that season hit a lot of doubles, knocked in a lot of runs, hit, hit down Third baseline, first I think, baseline. I think the idea is that when when a home run is hit, it just resets the playing field. Yes. So whether I mean, look, you you want two guys on base when a home run is hit, but we know that with the Angels, that's not always the case. And right. so I, I understand what you're saying. You want to stack offense by getting guys on base, putting pressure on the opposing pitcher, and not allow them to mentally reset after a home run. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. For sure. And again, I think that. The Angels, I would love to see them. That's going to be my new term. Stack some offense. Like yeah. stack it, stack yeah. it up on the opposing. Make pitcher. it difficult for that pitcher so that the pitcher can't just relax. And right. if you if you back up a, a trout with an Adele and and maybe somebody else, like that's what happened last year. There was just a lot of swing and missing yeah. when they started to get a rally. How many times did we see them get on base with two outs and then leaving those runners on base was terrible, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why I'm a big fan of having having a bat in the middle of that lineup or somewhere in that lineup that can just slap the ball around and keep that rally going, make the defense move instead of waiting to see if the ball's going over the fence or not. I think that's going to be a philosophy that is drilled into the one through nine, honestly, because yeah. they were so focused on hitting the ball hard and hitting home runs last season. I think that that philosophy is going to be much different in 2024. Hey, thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen every single day. We're just getting started here coming up on locked on angels. When Sean Owell's not at first base, who's going to back him up? And who are the options the Angels have in the minor leagues? Well, we're going to get into all of that coming right up. Can I tell you about eBay Motors? They are a lifesaver, especially for somebody like me who has no idea what I'm doing with my vehicle and I need a whole lot of help. And they're sponsoring today's episode of Locked on Angels. Passion, drive, and patience. That brings home the winning trophy, but it also brings home your ride or die and keeps your ride or die, your car, by the way, not your wife, not your husband, your ride or die is your car. Uh, keep it alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your car or truck or SUV. You'll always find what you're looking for, exactly what you're looking for at eBay Motors. And they have the eBay guarantee. And I love this, Johnny. The eBay guarantee fit means that if you get a part and it doesn't fit, you can get your money back. But their guarantee is that when you get a part, it's going to fit and you don't need to get your money back. And I love that. And I love that promise from eBay Motors. You're not going to be burning cash. You're going to be burning rubber with our friends at eBay Motors. So check them out with all the parts that you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and 
bring home that win. Keep your car or truck or SUV alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget to join Locked On Sports today over on YouTube. It's the world's first 24-7 national sports streaming channel. Head on over to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe and get all the top stories of the day from across the sports world, from the local experts of Locked On to the national shows as well. Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Head on, head on over there right now and hit that subscribe button and get into it. Johnny, when we talk about this roster recap, and there, there's going to be a trend that's going to be happening throughout every episode. There's going to be a lot of names, and we talk about backups that we're going to bring bring up multiple times right. because there's a lot of pieces, right? There's a lot of pieces that move around, and one of those pieces, yes, I love Barry that. Manassian said, I love that, and <laughs> one of those versatile players is Brandon Drury. Yeah. He's expected to get some reps at first base. In fact, he played 47 games last year for the Halos at first base will probably be in there against some lefties. He's similar to Sean Owell defensively. He had a negative one defensive run save last season. But again, he's versatile. He can play really anywhere. First base is not his best position, but he was sufficient over there. And Fangraphs actually projects that Drury will start at DH against lefties most mm. often. And Sean Owell may get more opportunities against lefties. Johnny, what do you think the best approach there is right now with Sean Owell? And Drury, would you put Drury in there against lefties based upon Sean O'Well's experience and also his uh, ability to hit lefties? I've seen the uh, Drury at DH a lot uh, across projections and not just fan graphs, but a lot of lineups figuring how the Angels are going to line up their guys. Mike, I I'm not putting Drury at DH. You no. have so many more options yes. than Drury at DH because there are other guys who need it. Mike right. Trout needs it. Joe yep. Adele could use it. If you don't want to see Joe Adele play defense, then put him at DH. Anthony Rendon, obviously put him at the DH spot. So correct to me, Drury is not going to be a, a DH all the time. In fact, it just makes the most sense to put Brandon Drury at first base against a lefty starter. And when it's a righty starter, put him at second base. Yeah. And the thing is, Mike, I think what's missing here is the fact that if you have Drury at first base against lefties and Sean Owell sits out, then you have Renjifo at second base. And by all accounts, Renjifo is a much better hitter from the right side of the plate as right. a switch hitter. Right. That's where his power comes from. That's where his average is best. Renjifo is very good against lefties. So to me, it just makes so much sense to put Brandon Drury at first base when there's a lefty on the mound, make Nolan Shanoel sit out and then put Renjifo at second base because he does really well against lefties. I think that's the play there. The second possible option for backup at first base is Matt Theis. Now you mm -hmm. talked about Theis yesterday as the backup catcher. I think the Angels have to be smart about how they're going to use Theis because of the conversation about Ohapi DHing and where he will be and getting him in the lineup a bit more often. Thice can play first. He he only got into three games last year, 16 innings at first base. In 2019, he played a career high 13 games, Johnny. Hey. <laughs> 81 innings uh, in, at first base that year. So would you take the over or the under on Thice playing in more than 20 games at first base this season? I'm going to take the under because I think they're going to have Thice work behind the dish as many times as they can in lieu of Logan Ohapi. Logan Ohapi needs to catch 100 games at least next season, and the other 50 need to go to Matt Theis. And I think that Logan Ohapi is going to end up at the DH spot more often than not. I think we were having a conversation about that on the YouTube uh, comments from yesterday's show about how many times do we think Logan Ohapi will be able to DH Mike. I think he's going to give them every reason to keep his bat in the lineup. So oh, I hope he, so. Yeah. If he's, if, if he's a hundred to 120 games behind the dish, I mean, 120 is a lot for a catcher. So I don't imagine it will go that high, but if he's over a hundred games behind the dish, you're going to want to figure him into the lineup somewhere, especially if he's riding the hot bat. I don't know if you, uh, Saw the stats I shared from yesterday about how Ohapi started the season. Yeah. But a 286 average or something like that and an 886 OPS uh, was just insane to me how yeah. he got off to a hot start last season before the injury. So 
I think he's going to give them every reason to get into the lineup, which means Matt Theis will probably be catching more games rather sure. than spending time over at first base. My hope is, and I'm trying to think of how we ended up here, but remember Taylor Ward ended up at first base and kind of closed his eyes and caught the ball and had to dive for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, my hope is that Theis will be that guy. Mm. Will be <laughs> that we don't need to go to Taylor Ward at first base because yeah. Matt Theis, yeah, Theis is available is going to be available to play first when you need him. And and the other thing I'll say too, Mike is. Matt Theis, as a lefty, is certainly not going to be in that lineup against lefty. So I think that that's also something to consider when it comes to Matt Theis over at first base. Do you feel that, Johnny? The 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 nervousness. Oh, I'm the, nervous. The anxiety. I'm oh, talking I got about anxiety. The Super Bowl coming. Yes. That's that's the problem with having a team in the Super Bowl that you love, that you're rooting for. The last few years have been great because we haven't had that. And I think it was 2020 where we got to root for him again. Same Super Bowl. Hopefully right. there's a different outcome. We obviously are 49er fans. I know that there are Rams fans that watch and it's the angels that bring us together. And we're thankful for that. And the reason why we're talking about the Super Bowl is because it's Super Bowl week and FanDuel is wishing you a happy Super Bowl week. And if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about getting the best seat on the couch or on the recliner, wherever you need to be so that you can watch the game, grabbing some of your favorite snacks and Placing some bets, especially if you're not a fan of either one of these teams, then you can engage by placing a bet. And that's why FanDuel is available for you. You can get a W, maybe one, two, three Ws this weekend. We're hoping for a team W. You might win some money. That'd be fantastic if you bet on Super Bowl 58. A lot of ways to bet on this game. Uh, which players will score a touchdown? I'm, I'm thinking maybe CMC gets at least one, right? Uh, George Kittle was injured, uh, but he's probably going to play. I don't think he's not going to play in the Super Bowl. I think Debo gets one. Is it four touchdowns? Not going to be enough against Patrick Mahomes, I don't think. But <laughs> right. You, but you can bet on whoever gets a touchdown on whatever team, how many points will be scored, so much more. And new customers, when you join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Again, fanduel.com slash locked on. You can make every moment more and make the Super Bowl more for you with FanDuel, the official sports uh, sports partner of the NFL. Mike, as we continue our roster recap on first base, we got to talk about the depth that's available. It seems like all the Angels did this offseason was sign depth yep. and bullpen arms. Yep. And, and I'm not complaining about the bullpen because they needed a revamp there. But, uh, you know, as, as fans, it's not exciting to talk about depth. Right. But we all know how easy it is for the Angels to burn through their depth and yeah. end up with I always find you know, a way. the seventh string first baseman that they can uh, pull up from single A for some reason, right? So I, I think it's important for us to have this conversation. So after Sean Owell, after Drury, after possibly Matt Theis, where do the Angels go? After that. Yeah. So here's a few names that you may not be aware of. And then we'll give you two names that you might be aware of. There's one that John, I want to get your thoughts on. Cause he's somebody that I, I would say that maybe you're a fan of, I think, hmm. you, I think you like him. So let me give you the names that maybe you're not aware of. There's Gabe Matthews. He's a 26 year old non-drafted free agent in AAA. Eric Wagaman, 26 year old rule five pick from the Yanks. But there are two intriguing names. And the first Johnny is Miguel Sanu. Uh, Miguel Sano. Sano, sorry, Miguel Sano. Uh, I have, I have a cold. Uh, Thirty years <laughs> old, and and he signed as a uh, minor league free agent with the Angels, and he is a power threat, or at least was when he was in the major leagues. Hit thirty home runs as recently as twenty twenty one. Yeah, hit thirty four in twenty nineteen with the Twins, and he surpassed twenty five home runs in two other seasons. He made the All Star team in twenty seventeen. His batting average and strikeout issues. Johnny, that's what did him in with the Twins. He mm -hmm. led the league in strikeouts in the, the pandemic shortened season in 2020 and only hit 204 that year. And then he hit 233 in 2021 and 083 in 60 at bats in 2022. Ouch. He had a knee injury. So that was a part of the issue. He really couldn't stand and get any push off of his leg. After that injury, the Twins decided to let him go. They opted for a $3 million buyout instead of a $14 million salary. I think that's a good decision. <laughs> he held some workouts, but nobody was really interested in signing him. He did play in the Dominican Winter League. Does appear to be healthy recently, yeah. 107 did see, games. Did you see all the weight 
that he lost. Like some of his photos of him, he looks good. And I mean, it's hitting a home run and then he's doing what is it? The bull that he's doing over yes. the home plate or something like that. And the thing about, you know, the knee injury, I mean, you can attribute that to the weight that he was carrying. And so to see him really like trim and slim was pretty cool to yeah. see Mike. I also didn't realize he's only 30. That's yeah. amazing. Right. Uh, we also saw him in his uh, angels get up. I don't know if you saw that picture floating yes. around on Twitter. So that was exciting to see. But uh, you were going to say in the Domin Dominican Winter League, uh, he had 107 plate appearances, struck out 30 times, but he did draw 14 walks and launched a couple of homers. So he ended up hitting 225, 346, and a 405 slugging percentage. Yeah. Interesting name, to say the least. I think so, Johnny. When he was signed, it was like, ooh, I, I liked him when he played. But then I didn't realize that he had been out of the league for about a year, year and a half. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a big risk. But having him be a minor league guy that could potentially back up the major league guys on a minor league deal, by the way. So, yes. Yeah. That's no, huge. No, no worry about money. So this is one of those situations where I'm not frustrated with the uh, low risk, high reward decision that the angels made yeah. another low risk, maybe a low risk depending on the, the finances, but possibly a high reward is a guy that I think that you're a fan of John. And that is, Evan White. I am really interested to see what happens with Evan White, Mike. Yeah. Uh, by all accounts, he was dealing with some injury issues. Uh, he's a hard worker, according to our friends over at Locked On Mariners. Yeah. Um, somebody who's not going to not put in the work. He's going to try to do his best out there. But uh, in 2020, he debuted with the Mariners. He signed a six-year, $24 million deal through 2025. But then he struggled big yep. time in the majors and in uh, the COVID year, 2020, he hit 176, uh, had a 252 on base percentage, 346 slugging and a 599 OPS. Ouch. Uh, he had eight home runs and 26 RBIs. It was the defense, Mike, that yep. kept him around the league. In fact, he won a gold glove at first base. He had a 2.2 ultimate zone rating over there. Seven defensive runs saved the next year his defense started to fall off. He had a yeah. 0.7, a positive 0.7 ultimate zone rating and two defensive runs saved. Um, when you think about Evan White, you might think about Jared Walsh. Yeah. Over there. Kind of a, yeah. Kind of a vacuum. Smooth, doing yeah. ballet, right? Yeah. So Mike, if we see Evan White or Miguel Sano in the majors, mm. it's because blank happens what do you what, fill in the blank for me it's got to be injuries got to be a lot of injuries mm. right and so that's when we'll see them in the majors i i hope we don't see them honestly i hope we don't yeah. see them at all because i would love to see shauna well and drury really hold down first base for us and that white and snow can develop in the minor leagues and be who they need to be john every mariners fan that we've talked to have said man if you can if you can click something shift mm -hmm. something in white he's going to be dangerous and he's going to be good and then i talked to a couple of twins fans who said snow is a guy that's fun to root for mm -hmm. so i'm glad that they're a part of our organization however <laughs> i hope we don't see them in the majors at all because my gut would say they're in the majors because of injuries what do you think well and you have to consider the fact that it's good that these guys have been there before and they have a track record especially Sano, because the stats that you listed about some of the stuff that he's been able to accomplish in his career, look, you're right. These are the guys that you don't want to see, but you're going to see if there's an injury or an issue or what have you. The fact is, if you have to go to that guy, then you want a guy on a minor league deal yeah. who's been in the majors before. Too much and too often, Mike, the Angels went to guys like, Monte Harrison, who never really accomplished anything in the majors, yep. right? And uh, Magnery Sierra, highly touted, excitable prospect from the Marlins, never amounted to anything in the majors. So right. it really just comes down to these backups having major league experience because they've done it before. Yep. And even if they aren't great, and we're not expecting them to be great, you need guys who have been there before. And I think that that's what is significant about the depth that the angels have added. I talked about the catching depth just yesterday and they're all for the most part guys who've been there before. And I think that that's important for the angels because too often they've relied on guys who again are just highly touted, uh, maybe didn't make it in this 
in this team or this system. And so the angels give them a chance. We can't be doing that no. anymore. And, nope. and we also can't be pulling up guys from double A AA or triple A who are just not ready to be there yeah. uh, and need more development time. So to be honest, I think the angels have built themselves a ton of nice depth yep. and, and, and the, and the Salt Lake bees are going to be a fun team to watch. To right. be honest, because yeah. these are the guys waiting in the wings, waiting in the reserves to be called up. So I think that while it has not been fun for us as fans and as hosts of locked on angels to be like, Oh, the angels made another depth signing, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the fifth one this week, it, it's, it's necessary and it's good. And we won't be complaining about it uh, later on in 2024 when we desperately need somebody who has experience in playing time. It looks good. Yes, it, yes does. it does. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every day, here's remember that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Lockdown Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, come on over to today's show on YouTube. Get in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way to the comments section because that really helps us out a lot. We'd love for you to get in on the conversation. It's the best way to reach us. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? John, let's talk second base. We mentioned Brandon Drury. But there are other names at second base that we need to consider. So who starts? Who backs up? Does Renjifo get at bats there? Will it be enough for him to prove himself? Hmm. What about Drury? Is Kyron Paris a part of that conversation? We're going to talk about second base tomorrow on Locked on Angels. I'm excited to talk about Drury duty on yes. tomorrow's show. I love Brandon Drury. Hope he stays healthy. I would love to see a full season from that guy. I mean, that's our statement for everybody right right i hope he stays healthy that'd be great to see a full season from him absolutely hey friends we hope you'll come back and join us for that conversation about second base tomorrow until then my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john thanks for being here with us and we'll see you back here on wednesday speaking of healthy somebody said i was like rendon not showing up to the show so i had to prove him <laughs> wrong today <laughs> no wobbling glaze mike <laughs>